Good afternoon, welcome to the Parity Group PLC AGM Proceedings. In fact, this recorded presentations meeting attendees will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. It can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. Just click on Q&A, scroll to the bottom, type your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question uh, submitted today. However, all questions be reviewed with the responses published on the Investor Meet Company platform where appropriate to do so. I'd now like to hand you over to Mark Braun, Chairman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, as many of you will have seen from, from me before, I, uh, I prefer not to be scripted, but today is a formal process, so it will be scripted and I will be reading. So forgive me from, uh, from uh, having my eyes on the paper in front of me. Anyway, um, good afternoon. It's now 12 p.m. Um, and I'd like to welcome you to the 2002 Annual General Meeting of Parity Group PLC. Uh, thank you very much for uh, attending today. Uh, I'm Mark Braun, I'm the chairman of the company, uh, and I'll be chairing this meeting today. I'm joined by um, so several of my colleagues. I'm joined by David Firth, uh, who's a non-executive director of the company, Mike Johns to my left, who is chief financial officer, and Andrew Lear, Lear one further down, um, who is company secretary. The notice of the meeting is set out in the notice sent to shareholders dated 16th of May, uh, 2022, and due notice of the meeting has therefore been issued to the company's members. If you agree, I propose that we take the notice as read. We have a number of members attending today uh, via the Investor Meet company platform, uh, but none of them will be in a position to vote on matters uh, during the annual general meeting. However, they may have voted uh, already uh, via proxy. There are also a number of people who are attending this meeting in person who are not members of the company and are from our advisors. Unless anyone has any objection to the attendance of non-members, I will continue with the formal section of the meeting. Okay, a quorum uh, for the meeting is two members present in person or by proxy and entitled to vote. Uh, as a quorum is present, uh, we may proceed with the business of the meeting. Uh, this meeting has been convened to consider six ordinary resolutions and two special resolutions. Now, before I go uh, through those resolutions, I'd like to read the AGM statement, which was released this morning uh, by RNS. During the company's recent presentation on the 27th of April 2022 of its results for the year ending 31st of December 2021, we highlighted that the first half of 2022 was about identifying and building new business opportunities. As a result of the reduction in costs in 2021, we've had scope to make investments in building capability areas where the market is stronger and where we can deliver on new business opportunities in the second half of this year. In H1, we established a new team dedicated to permanent recruitment and can evidence both early success with placements and a rapidly growing pipeline. Within the private sector, we've added four new revenue generating clients since the start of the year and have focused our marketing initiatives on developing more private sector relationships and revenue. Our core market in the public sector has not been overlooked and we're focused on expanding our reach within this area by winning places on new frameworks, adding four new local government frameworks within the last two months. Over the last 12 months, we have changed the direction of the business and now have momentum that we are confident can be transformed into improved financial returns as we move forwards. That's the end of that statement that, uh, as I say, was published as an RNS uh, first thing this morning. Um, so uh, I now uh, I now propose the following resolutions to the meeting, the full text of which is set out in the notice of the meeting, a copy of which you will have all received. Resolution number one, um, I pr propose resolution number one in the notice as an ordinary resolution. Uh, it is to receive the accounts of the company for the financial year ending 31st of December 2021 and the reports of the directors and auditors thereon. Are there any questions? No questions. So I put the resolution to the meeting on a show of hands. Will all those in favor please raise their hands? David? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, they're, they're just, just for uh, formality, there is four. Uh, members here and four have voted in favor. Um, uh, for all those against, raise their hands. There's nobody here that can or will and haven't. So um, there's zero against. Uh, now I hold 25,086,209 
proxy votes in favour and 772 votes against the resolution. There are 137 votes for the chairman's discretion, which I vote in favour, and there are 20 votes withheld. I therefore declare resolution number one is carried by the necessary majority. And you'll see the detail on the screen now. Resolution number two. I propose resolution number two in the notice as an ordinary resolution to prove the director's remuneration report contained within the annual report and accounts for the financial year ended 31st December 2021. Are there any questions? Um, no, I, I will uh, put the resolution to the meeting on a show of hands. Will all those in favour please raise their hands? There's four voting. Uh, any against, which there are zero. I hold 24,970,500 uh, proxy votes in favour and 15,861 votes against the resolution. There are 137 votes for the chairman's discretion, which are voted in favour. And there are 100,640 votes withheld. I therefore declare resolution two is carried by the necessary majority. Thank you. I propose resolution number three in the notice as an ordinary resolution in accordance with Article 92 of the company's Articles of Association uh, to re-elect Mr. David Firth as a director. Are there any questions? No. Nope. Um, will all those in favour please raise their hands? That's three. Um, David is not voting for himself, obviously. Um, and will all those against please raise their hands, of which there are none. Uh, I hold 25,070,986 proxy votes in favour and 828 votes against the resolution. There are 137 votes for the chairman's discretion, which are voted in favour, and there are 15,187 votes withheld. I therefore de declare resolution three is carried by the necessary majority. Thank you. I propose resolution four in the notice as an ordinary resolution to reappoint Grant Thornton, UK LLP, as auditors of the company from the conclusion of this annual general meeting until the conclusion of the next annual general meeting of the company to be held in 2023. Are there any questions? No. Nope. Um, I'll put the resolution to the meeting on a show of hands. Will all those in favour please raise their hands? Four in favour, those against, zero. I hold 25,070,979 proxy votes in favour and 15,845 votes against the resolution. There are 137 votes for the chairman's discretion, which are in favour, and there are 177 votes withheld. I therefore declare resolution four is carried by the necessary majority. Thank you. Resolution five, I propose resolution number five in the notice as an ordinary resolution to authorise the directors to determine the auditor's remuneration. Are there any questions? Nope. Um, will all those in favour please raise their hands? Four in favour, there is nobody raising their hand against. I hold 25,086,925 proxy votes in favour and 56 votes against the resolution. There are 137 votes for the chairman's discretion which are voted in favour. Uh, there are 20 votes withheld. I therefore declare resolution five is carried by the necessary majority. Thank you. Resolution six, I propose resolution six in the notice as an ordinary resolution to authorize the directors to allot shares in the company or grant rights to subscribe for or convert any security into shares in the company up to the nominal amounts set out in the notice. Are there any questions? No. Nope. I put the resolution to the meeting on a show of hands. Will all those in favor please raise your hands? That's four. There are no hands raised against. I hold 25 million. 69,664 proxy votes in favour and 17,085 votes against the resolution. There are 183 votes for the chairman's discretion which are voted in favour. There are 206 votes uh, withheld. I therefore declare resolution six is carried by the necessary majority. Thank you. Resolution seven. I propose resolution number seven uh, set out in the notice as a special resolution to disapply the statutory preemption rights on the issue of shares in the company or the grant of rights pursuant to resolution six up to the nominal amount set out in the notice. Are there any questions? Nope. 
Okay. Uh, I put the resolution to the meeting on a show of hands. With all those in favour, please raise their hand. Uh, there are no. There's nobody here to uh, raise their hands against. So there's no against. I hold 24,947,924 proxy votes in favour and 117,248 votes against the resolution. There are 83 votes for the chairman's discretion which are voted in favour. There are 21,783 votes withheld. I therefore declare resolution 7 is carried by the necessary majority. Resolution 8, I propose resolution uh, number 8 as set out in the notice a special resolution that the company be authorised to make market purchases of its ordinary shares in accordance with the terms specified in the notice. Are there any questions? No. Will all those in favour please raise their hands? Four votes for. No votes against. I hold 24,937,046 proxy votes in favour and 50,072 votes against the resolution. There are 183 votes for the chairman's discretion which were voted in favour. There are 100,020 votes withheld. I therefore declare resolution 8 is carried by the necessary majority. So that concludes today's formal business. I'd like to, uh, to thank David, Mike and Andrew and those shareholders present for their attendance today. And also thank, uh, thank you also to those of you listening uh, online. I declare the formal part of the annual general meeting closed but of course i will move on to answering any questions so um on questions we have um we have uh, none in the room um i've checked um so it's really just those that have come through online and um i'll coordinate that with my colleagues if i may um the first question is from uh neil t um neil uh, you've said under your leadership does Parity Solutions still exist? And if so, what is its focus? Um, now, the formality of Parity Solutions, is there a, you know, is that business actually still trading? Or So by Parity Solutions, I think uh, what I refer to as Parity Consultancy Services, so the managed services piece and the consulting work that, we, uh, that we've done previously. Got it. And, the, and there, is, there is a reduced focus on, on that area and a focus on recruitment. Um, so we are still doing some business in that area, but it isn't a focus for us. Perfect. Lovely. I would, I, I would also like to add that from a recruitment point of view, there is a recruitment solutions proposition that's being developed and evolved. So you may hear us use the phrase parity recruitment solutions in future, um, in future broadcasts. Okay. Um, Neil T again, you've asked the question, is the private sector a better arena for recruitment, either permanent or temporary currently than the public sector? I think, it, I mean, uh, uh, Mike may want to add to what I, I say here. I think um, the, the answer is, uh, it's not about being better, it's about being different. Dynamics are different. In uh, public sector, which is an area which this company has had a long and successful uh, track record, um, we're seen as one of the, uh, the main players in that space. And it's a market where we have a tremendous amount of um, uh, respect and uh, also revenues and customers and and um, and candidates that we work with. So as, as a market, it's a tremendous market. It's also a resilient market. You know, the public sector will be resilient as we've seen during COVID, and it will be through other down uh, downturns in uh, in in the um, in the economy. Um, so it's a market that we value and we trust, uh, and in which we are trusted, and therefore um, it's a great market to be in. But we also see the potential for further growth in the private sector. And in the private sector, there's certainly the opportunity to um, add value in ways that will be uh, more margin enriching. In other words, the margins are, are potentially much higher. Um, and uh, therefore, it's a market that we are also uh, beginning to explore. And, and we really only just scratched the surface of that with um, what we've spoken about today. And certainly we'll add to that. No, well, only a very, very short comment. I think the public sector offers us the opportunity for significant volumes. They undertake very large projects around IT. So there's an opportunity for us to have a lot of contractors on site for extended periods of time, which provides us certainty around income um, and you know, the, the opportunity to plan further ahead. So that's one of the benefits in terms of, in terms of public sector. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, 
that's the last question, actually. Um, as there are no more questions, um, I'd like to pass you back to Paul. That's great. Thank you very much indeed for updating Investors Day. Can I please ask attendees not to close the session as you now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order the board can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and that would be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the Board of Parity Group PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's annual general meeting proceedings. Thank you and good afternoon to you all. Thank you.